the International Photography Hall of Fame and Museum. That's next on City Corner. I'm Steve Potter and this is City Corner. The International Photography Hall of Fame and Museum, you may not know it, is located right here in St. Louis. It's on the 3400 block of Olive in Grand Center. John Nagel is the executive director and he joins us today. Hi John, welcome to the program. Good morning Steve, thank you. I think um, the International Photography Hall of Fame and Museum might be one of those sort of gems that a lot of people don't know about. It is. We've only been here for a little over a year. Um, although the organization is uh, 50 years old. Um, but we did receive a Gemmy Award uh, recently as an, you know, a, a one of those uh, uh, places that people don't know about yet, and, and it's, a, it's a great place to visit. Yeah, so what's, what's your overall mission? You sort of, you show, you sort of um, um, give the hats off to photography, both past and present, I guess. Exactly right. Um, uh, the, the organization was started uh, by uh, a group of people who felt that there should be some honor given to the uh, inventors and pioneers of photography. That's where the Hall of Fame comes in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so we have about 71 inductees who um, have helped uh, uh, push photography forward, the inventors of photography, and, and those responsible for um, the great changes in, in uh, the photography movements throughout the years. Now, your background, you are, are or were a professional photographer yourself? I uh, graduated from a school of art in photography, San Francisco State University, and I've, my basic uh, 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 career was teaching photography at the college level. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also do, um, I had also done commercial uh, architectural photography. Well, maybe we can get into this a little bit later, but uh, in your career, then you've, you've, seen, you've seen a lot of changes as far as photography goes, technically and, and everything, right? Yes. Uh, well, photography is, um, is fraught with changes throughout its whole uh, history, and um, having taught the history of photography, I was involved in learning many of the vintage processes, and, uh, of, of course, the, the main process for so long was the... Uh, silver gelatin printing in uh, from film mm -hmm. in a dark room and now of course everything is digital of course when I was a kid growing up uh, people got cameras for Christmas it was a big deal it's a lot different now everyone's sort of a photographer when they have their uh, device of some sort exactly uh, <laughs> the uh, you don't have any selfies at the museum do you <laughs> we did in our last exhibit oh, really? actually, and they were blown up to like 30 by 40 inches and, and <laughs> quite interesting um, the um, Everybody's a, a photographer nowadays. Um, do you think that's a good thing? I think it's a wonderful thing. I, I really do. I think that uh, um, we are at, uh, uh, of the mind that photography is a very democratic medium, uh, and that uh, all, val all, all of the um, various uh, avenues of expression are, are valid in photography, from the, from the selfie, from the picture of your food plate at lunch, <laughs> to uh, um, you know, the, the most sophisticated, you know, f photographs go for millions of dollars at, at auction mm -hmm. um, uh, nowadays, so. Wow. How unique <coughs> is the International Photography uh, Hall of Fame and Museum, this, this facility in St. Louis? How unique in the country is it? We think we're the only Hall of Fame in photography in the world. Um, there is a, um, a, a uh, photojournalist, photojournalism Hall of Fame in Washington, Missouri. Uh, but as far as the, uh, the type of work that we do, I think we're the only place. Many other organizations honor photography and its history. Mm -hmm. but well, you do a lot of things we'll get into later. You know, there are, there are exhibits you can see as well as, you know, photography itself too. But let's talk about a current show that opened in February and is running, I want to say to May, no, to April, through April the 26th. And that's St. Louis Architecture, A Proud Heritage. What's that yes. all about? That, uh, that is a, a show of uh, local um, 
photographers who photographed local subjects of architecture. Um, it's not. Um, it's not the greatest buildings in St. Louis, not a catalog of buildings in so, St. Louis. So it's not the arch in the courthouse? Well, they, they show up, okay. but uh, uh, more of uh, the personal expression of photographers who enjoy photographing architecture and who enjoy photographing St. Louis. There's a lot of hidden gems in St. Louis architecturally. Right. I think, I think, I think there are nine photographers in this exhibit. That's correct. Right. Mm -hmm. And how did you choose them? Um, just from uh, the people that I've known over the years, I've been doing, as I said, architectural photography uh, for quite a long time and uh, got to know um, uh, many of the uh, local architectural photographers and invited them. Are they necessarily St. Louis photographers? Um, they are. They are. They're, and the subject are St. Louis. But it's, it's the type of, uh, many of them are commercial photographers too. Elise O'Brien, for example, is probably one of the most sought after commercial architectural photographers in town. Um, but the work that we're showing of hers is um, uh, the kind of independent creative work she does. Well, we have, uh, you were kind <coughs> enough to bring along uh, some of the, uh, some examples of what's in the show. So why don't we take a look at the first one and if you can tell me a little bit about the artist and what the subject matter is. I, now I, I recognize that because that's in Grand Center. That's right. This is, um, a photograph by, as it says, Greg Barth, and it's the Pulitzer building in the foreground, uh, the Tadeo Ando uh, architectural masterpiece, and the Masonic temple in the background. And the th curious thing about the way uh, Greg photographs is that he uses a large format camera, but he tilts the, the back or the lens to uh, confuse the focus. So when you look at this picture up close, all the foreground area is unsharp. And the sharp part of the picture is the facade, the rear facade of the Masonic Temple. And I enjoy the way the, the old building plays off the new building. It's, it's an nice interesting contrast. There. It is, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's got a, a nice vantage point there. You know, you're talking about the kind of camera, what do you call that, a wide? What'd you a call view it? camera. A view camera, I guess I probably don't know exactly what that is. I interviewed on the radio a while, not very recently, Regina DeLuise. I don't know if you know who that is. I don't know her. Happens to be Dom DeLuise's niece, the comedian. Oh. But she's a professional photographer at, at some college in the East, and she, she had some work here. But she uses, um, and I won't be able to use the right words to describe it, but it looks like the camera you'd use 100 years ago that stands on a tripod, a big box, and her image is upside down because it's very simple. Do many people shoot? I don't think many people shoot that way anymore. Several of the people in this group uh, do that. That's, a, that's what we would call a view camera. Oh, really? Yes. Uh -huh. And that's superior, why? Well, um, typically, the, the, well, the modern speak, the more megapixels you have, the sharper your image. Uh -huh. In the past, uh, in analog photography, the larger the piece of film, the more detail you were able to get. In fact, the uh, West Coast photographers like Ansel Adams and Edward Weston used 8x10 cameras and uh, simply for the fact mm. that they got the, the greater resolution. Let's take a look at another image from the show, St. Louis Architecture, A Proud <coughs> Heritage. And we know what that is. They saved that building a year ago, didn't they? That's right, that building was under controversy for a while. The Del Taco building. The old Del Taco. Yeah, now Starbucks. Uh, Mark Fisher um, does some lovely work that is uh, quite um, whimsical, I think, the, of the, uh, seven or eight images that we have on display from Mark. They're, they're just lovely little details like the sandwich shop on, on uh, Locust and um, a donut shop out on uh, Chippewa. You know what strikes me about this? I like how that one traffic cone is just laying over and he didn't bother you know, to, to prop it back up. Right. I don't know why that I, my eyes <laughs> sort of drawn to that. What strikes you about that picture? Well, just the, the flying saucer, the dimension of that uh, uh, Henby design that uh, I think is quite striking, and, and the barrenness of the foreground, which uh, alludes to the, f the threatened uh, uh, history that it, that it recently had. You know, I, I have a chance to interview photographers from time to time, and I'm always curious on their philosophy of like um, what they'll do, how much Photoshop they'll use, or how much they'll play with the original, um, with the original shot. Do you have any feelings about that? Can people kind of do what they want? Absolutely. I think that uh, you know, there's some restrictions if you're uh, doing certain kinds of work, like photojournalism. Um, there, there are strict requirements. Because it, you need, it needs to be accurate. For honesty, right. right. Uh, but aren't photographs honest? 
Uh, <laughs> have you seen photographs uh, of yourself after uh, a, a studio sitting and, and wondered who that person was? Uh, I, I, th there's a, a lot of uh, misleading elements about photography that um, we all recognize, but we, it's a puzzle to know why. And the reason is that uh, when you look at uh, a photograph, you're looking at a frame, right? And you don't know what happens mm -hmm. uh, outside the frame. So you're, you're boxed into a, a particular part of the environment, and you don't know what happened before the moment or after. So it's like looking at a photograph, it's like trying to figure out the story of a movie with a single frame. Mm -hmm. Do you always know a shot when you get it? Uh, I always hope for the best. Um, <laughs> sometimes you feel very confident. Other times you discover things later on that the, the ones you thought were not going to be significant turn out to be quite nice. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many shots do you think, you, this is just an average guess, but like to get a really good shot, do you take 100 shots? Or? Uh, I try to be more careful than that. <laughs> uh, and that comes from using a view camera in, in, in your background uh, because the view camera, like you said, is on a, cam on a tripod, it's a box, it's upside down. Mm -hmm. You don't get that out of the car and, until you're pretty convinced that what you're going to photograph is... Let's look at one oh. more shot before we go to break from the show at the International Photography Hall of Fame and Museum. <clears throat> is that on Van Deventer? That is on Van Deventer. It's under c reconstruction right Part now. Part of SLU. Yeah. Yes, uh-huh. And that's another um, a Mark Fisher image. So that's an old building, I guess, from the 1800s, probably? Uh, yeah, I would think so, with the cast iron uh, ornaments on the, the post, the column, and, and so forth. You know, you said you, you made a reference, uh, John, to St. Louis architecture, and when I've interviewed people from out of town that have never been here, even from out of the country, they always marvel at the, the architecture <coughs> in this city as being something special. Well, there, there are um, significant um, achievements in architecture. The Wainwright Building, for example, which was the first skyscraper. Um, that too was threatened at one time, mm -hmm. uh, in, back in 1973. But, um, but we've saved a lot of uh, our, our, our history, and, and, and a lot of it is uh, ex just walking through downtown. It's, it's just a, there's one surprise after another. John Nagel is the executive director of the International Photography Hall of Fame and Museum. We're going to take this break, and we'll be back right after this. From the dark, cold streets of the city to a cage in the local shelter to heaven, your lap. It's time for This Week in Bad Stats. Bad stats? Horrible stats. Here goes. 132. That's how many batters struck out four times in one game last season. Wow, very good. Here's a tough one, though. Three and four. No idea. That's how many kids have witnessed bullying. Three out of four. That's not a good stat. No, it's not. But it can change. Kids want to help, but they don't know how. Visit StopBullying.gov and give them the tools they need to help prevent bullying. There are plenty of safe ways kids can help at StopBullying.gov. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more.
I'm Steve Potter. Welcome back to City Corner. And today we're talking with John Nagel. He's the executive director of the International Photography Hall of Fame and Museum, which is located in Grand Center in St. Louis. And we're talking about a show that's currently up through the uh, April the 26th, which is St. Louis Architecture, a Proud Heritage. Let's look at some more images from that show. And these are photographs taken by St. Louis photographers of St. Louis architecture. This is a, an image of City Garden by uh, Debbie Frankie. And um, when you see these uh, images of Debbie, she used a, a process called metal print uh -huh. that are, are absolutely brilliant in, uh, in the way the prints are reproduced. And I, I like the color, the starkness of the, uh, of the sculpture and then the color behind it. Exactly, right. Yeah, and the, and the lighting. Let's mm -hmm. look at the next one. Uh, this is an image by David Halen. David is um, uh, a, a quiet photographer and he makes quiet images. <clears throat> and this is a, an in interior of a home um, here in the city. Uh, the home is not identified, but it, uh, it's just a lovely uh, composition. What do you like about that shot? Um, I like the pattern of the floor and the way that stairs uh, uh, take over the, the rhythm of, of uh, the shapes uh, and make them more uh, uh, horizontal and, and step up. The, and the stairs look worn, and I like that. <coughs> that's, yeah, that's interesting, yeah. too. Let's go to the next one. Hmm. <clears throat> this is, uh, used to be the um, uh, headquarters for the zinc uh, uh, company, uh, some kind of a zinc corporation. It's downtown and it's... Uh, looks like 1960s architecture. It, it looks like that, yeah. And it's a, it's a very uh, metallic grid. Um, it's part of uh, a hotel now. Now that happens to be in black and white. I remember a time I keep going back to ancient history where I always thought like professional photographers only shot in black and white. Now I know that's not true anymore. How do you come down on that? Well, uh, Ansel Adams was a proponent of black and white photography in the 40s and 50s, but uh, there were other uh, photographers who, who worked with color early on. And, um, and color has been, I think color became a, a practical matter um, in the early 1950s uh, with the introduction of vector color paper mm -hmm. um, and vector color film. Uh, Kodachrome was was around since the middle 30s, so uh, color photography has been available actually since the turn of the century with the autochrome process. Huh. Interesting. Let's look at three more images from the show at the International Photography Hall of Fame and Museum. And you can tell us, John Nagel, what we're looking at. Oh, this is um, the Welsh Baby Carriage Factory, uh, an image by Don McKenna. Uh, interestingly, this is right along um, Highway 4455, and during a tornado about 15 years ago, part of the building was blown over, and uh, 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 a woman parked next to it uh, had, was crushed in her car. No kidding. But uh, the building has been restored. It's uh, uh, condominiums now, I think. Huh. Let's go to the next one. And this is a, an image, a diptych, by Elise O'Brien. Uh, she was the photographer that, that did the, uh, uh, chronicled the, development of the uh, west uh, east wing of the of the art museum so this is a a, a comparison of two photographs uh, that of, of the museum uh -huh. and let's look at one more an image by Richard Sprengler showing the old courthouse and sunset on the arch um, this is um, this is one of the earlier pictures in the in the show Richard uh, has been an avid photographer of st. Louis for 25 years or so, and, and this goes back uh, a long time. Is it tough to make a living as a photographer these days? Um, if you talk to photographers, they'll say yes. <laughs> um, but, but you know, f th 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 there's a, a, a tremendous range of photography, Steve, the, um, you know, from the selfie to, um, to, the, to the very sophisticated art uh, uh, images as we talk, but also, uh, all science stands on the shoulders of photography. All of the invent, all of the discoveries in the in the twentieth century, of um, uh, planets and and uh, uh, nova. I mean, uh, they were all rel related to photography and, and leading to the Big Bang theory and what we know cosmologically. Mm -hmm. Depended on photography. The Hubble Space Telescope was a giant camera. So um, you, you can go to the other end of the scale and, and look at uh, the electron microscope and what we've discovered in um, extremely uh, great magnifications of small things. 
Hmm. So um, there's there's a scientific photography, there's photojournalism, there's communications. Um, the, the social media aspect of photography today is True. enormous. Yeah, I hadn't really considered that. Let's look at, uh, we have three more shots from this current exhibition. And that is? This is uh, the interior of the, uh, the Cathedral Basilica on uh, Lindell Boulevard. It's another Richard's, uh, it's a, a That's Richard's an amazing building. Photo. Yeah. Uh, there are more mosaics in that building than any building in the world, I'm told. Uh, something over 80,000 square feet, which is nearly two acres. Let's go to the next one. And Gary Tetley is uh, both an architect and a photographer, and he brings um, he brings a sensitivity to the structure of of buildings that uh, is a little bit unique uh, from the other photographers. Uh, he also is a uh, an expert in the uh, the work of Theodore Link, who did uh, Union, Union Station, Station right? yeah, and many other important buildings in town and other places too. I think like New York, yeah, yeah I, I think so, yeah. Yes. And I think we have one more. Another Tetley image of uh, Union Station. This is St. Louis Architecture, a proud heritage, which is up right now at the International Photography Hall of Fame and Museum and running through April the 26th. You also ha are doing something in conjunction with the Missouri Botanical Garden. Exactly. This week we opened um, a, a new exhibit uh, at the Monsanto Hall in the Ridgeway Center of uh, 24 images from photographers who took a, a cultural trip to Nanjing, China last year. We have five images. Why don't we kind of roll through them now and take a look. What's this one? So Rita Shu did these uh, 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 rickshaw drivers uh, at, at rest um, in, the, in Nanjing. Let's keep going. Oh, that's uh, beautiful. This is uh, Dan Dreyfus uh, as a side trip after the work uh, we did in Nanjing, we visited the uh, Yellow Mountains, and this is a, a view that Dan did. It's beautiful. And we'll go to the next. Um, this is part of the Yellow Mountains as well. Uh, they're very, um, they've been visited for, for centuries, and over the centuries, they've built these granite steps. So I was going to say, is that pathway as precarious as it looks? It's, it's <laughs> all steps. It's all granite steps. I don't know how they constructed it, but uh, it's, um, uh, Everywhere you go, it's, it's, there's no dirt paths. It's all dirt, oh. all the granite. Let's go to the next one. Um, the previous one was by He Zheng Ping, who is a, uh, a, a resident of Nanjing and a friend of our organization. This is Don McKenna's view of the Nanjing, um, a plant in the Nanjing Botanical Garden, which is a, uh, a garden which has a strong alliance to the Missouri Botanical Garden. Mm -hmm. And we have one more, I believe. And this is Richard Sprengler. Uh, Look at that bird. Yeah. <laughs> he calls it the blue bird of happiness. Uh, the bird is painted on the wall, and uh, it looks like a real bird. <laughs> now, see, that's such an interesting shot to me, because it looks like one of those shots that's so unusual, you almost think it had to be set up, but uh, you know I know it wasn't. Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, in fact, uh, another photographer standing next to him got a different version of the same uh, shot. Let's go over a few things, John. Uh, the International Photography Hall of Fame and Museum been in St. <coughs> Louis about a year. It's located in Grand Center on Olive, right where Olive merges into Lindell. If people know mm -hmm. where the Hotel Ignacio there, you're yeah. sort of in that same complex with the Moto Museum. Yes. Triumph yeah. Grill and all that. Right. We're above the Triumph Grill on the second floor. Do you have regular hours? Or? Yes. We're open um, Wednesday through Sunday from 11 to 5. And what kind of people have you seen come through the doors in the last year? Is it a lot of local people? Is it mostly tourists from out of town? Or? Uh, mostly very smart people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, 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 a whole, whole gamut of, of uh, interested in photography. You know, photography is a, uh, has a wide interest uh, for people in St. Louis. Uh, there are 14 universities with accredited photo programs, hmm. uh, maybe a hundred high school programs. Uh, uh, the largest and oldest camera club in the country is the St. Louis Camera Club. And tell me a little bit about your building. We described where it is, but I think it's in excess of 6,000 square feet. That sounds really big. It's, uh, it's f f not as big as we'd like, but it, uh, it is a, a, a nice space to, uh, to show our cameras. We have 6,000 cameras. Yeah, I wanted to mention that too. Besides um, exhibiting uh, uh, photographs, you have historical instruments. Exactly. Yeah, cameras and uh, related uh, photographic equipment. Uh, and also, uh, we have a collection of prints. Uh, You've got a couple of things coming up I wanted to ask you about. Uh, <clears throat> a couple of exhibitions are still going on and will be for another month or so. Uh, Ferguson and Beyond, I bet that's interesting. That's coming up after this, uh, oh, it is. the architecture show. And yes, it's, uh, we've, we are, uh, have uh, been in touch with 
photographers who have chronicled um, the um, events in, in Ferguson, uh, we're, we're thinking that it, it, it shows a, um, an, an unadulterated uh, view of, of events uh, that are in, in many cases very, um, I think, inspiring and uplifting. <clears throat> that's one thing that's sort of interesting about uh, our current days, isn't it? Our current time, when you're talking about photography, uh, when you have an event like Ferguson, whatever it might be, we were talking about everyone's a photographer these days. Um, if Ferguson had happened uh, 50 years ago, you wouldn't have a fraction of the photographs you have today, I would guess. Exactly. And, and if you, uh, you wouldn't have the news media that um, covered it extensively. And, and I think uh, to a certain um, negative effect, um, seizing on anything that was occurring. And um, I think things tended to get blown out of proportion. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend people do? Maybe go to your website? Because you usually have several shows up and running at a time, don't you? Yes. Uh, they can keep track of what we're doing at IPHF.org. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have that come up a little bit later in the show. And I know already you've got stuff on the calendar for next year. Well, we uh, are looking forward to uh, showing the work of uh, Vivian Meyer, the nanny who was recently discovered uh, after she passed away as being a superlative uh, street photographer. Mm -hmm. And you also do s uh, things like you have speakers from time to time? Yes, uh, we've just had two um, speakers for the, um, related to the um, Architectural Heritage Show, and we're having Blanche Tuhill come. On April the 4th, and of course she's a former yeah. chancellor of University of Missouri-St. Exactly. Louis. And is she an actual photographer, or are these her photographs? Um, I don't think she's an actual photographer. I, I, I'm unsure about that, but uh, um, I'll have to ask Blanche. We'll find out on April the 4th. Yes. <laughs> well, John Nagel, I want to thank you. Welcome you to town. I'm, it's a year late, but uh, I hope you and your family enjoy it here. Thank you, Steve. And uh, it's the International Photography Hall of Fame and Museum. If you haven't seen it, make a point to go. It's uh, at 3415 Olive in St. Louis. That's right where Olive and Lindell come together, part of Grand Center. John Nagel, thank you so much. And uh, we enjoy the work that, uh, that you allow us to view. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to it. More. That's it for this edition of City Corner. I'm Steve Potter. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll join me next time. Bye.